I'm Ariane and today I'm going to show you how to make a lovely silk veil like the one that I'm wearing today. Its hem is so fine that it almost looks like it's not there. But it's simply whip stitch. It's just that the size and the fineness of the roll make it mm, perfectly suited to fine silk veils. I found out about it from the Museum of London's book, Textiles and Clothing, which you've got to have. And their description of that piqued my curiosity just a bit, and maybe seemed to be a bit of a challenge. Another form of hem particularly suited to fine silks is the rolled hem. This is less conspicuous than the double hem, but demands more skill and manual dexterity, as it cannot easily be pinned in place before sewing. The left hand rolls the raw edge and holds this in place whilst it is stitched by the right hand. The technique is used solely on the fine transparent silk veils of the late 14th century, and then it gives some examples where it has proved most efficient as well as unobtrusive. The rolling and stitching, long diagonal hem stitching which wraps itself around the roll, is especially finely executed, the roll being less than one millimeter deep and with approximately five to six stitches per centimeter. These hems are clearly the work of a highly experienced and skilled worker and often seem to have been stitched with the material facing away from the sewer. Today it is more usual for the material to be held the other way round. Hmm, definitely a challenge. But when I sat down with my silk scrap and my regular cotton thread, and I practiced rolling this roll and stitching the stitch. Five minutes later, my stitches were the size that they said, and my roll was the size that they said. And it wasn't just me, because I've since taught this class, and most of my students can get it in maybe a little bit more than five minutes. And knit. It is just the finishing touch that a fine silk veil needs. So, let me sit down and we'll get started. Alright. Since I know you can't see it in the veils themselves. I made an example to show you exactly what the stitch looks like. This is the underside, and this is the right side. You might be able to see the lip where the roll is, but when you're working with a silk veil and the roll is less than a millimeter in dimensions, you're not going to be able to tell which is which without looking really closely. Now, you can use a scrap of whatever you have lying around. I am using another scrap of heavyweight linen and a bright red piece of embroidery floss so you can't miss what I'm doing. Now, fabric rolls best on a wet finger and thumb, so dampen your fingers. Hopefully you've washed your hands recently. If not, go away and do that. Now, the process for rolling this is really simple. It's a lot like the process for making a knot. You just Use your thumb to roll it off your forefinger and you keep it pinched in your hand because otherwise it will come undone. So I've 
there you have the roll. Now to get started, I always like to hide my knots. Make sure I put one in. No, I haven't yet. All right, I'll show you how to make a knot. Wrap around, roll it off your finger. Use your tall finger to hold it in place while you pull the thread. And now you have a knot. So, since I like to hide my knots, any phlebotomists out there will have an easier time doing this than maybe the rest of us. Imagine that the rolled hem is a straw. Stick your needle inside the straw as far up as you can go and then poke it out the side. Now you have a knot hidden inside that roll and you just come around to the same exact place and there you've locked it in place. Now hold your fabric right there and roll it a little bit ahead of there. It'll get easier once you can wrap this around your finger. So I've pinched it as well as I can, although it's a little short for truly wrapping it. forward um, two millimeters and then we do that again slide the needle down your finger until you can slide it under the edge of the fabric go forward two millimeters come out and pull your thread When I taught this class one time, one of the students was left-handed, and she explained that last sentence, which I hadn't really gotten. Um, but they often seem to have been stitched with the material facing away from the sewer. Well, since she's left-handed, Everything she did was backwards compared to us right-handed folk. I'm right-handed, so I'm using my right hand for the sewing and my left hand for holding it. When she does it backwards, and I'm not going to change things around because I don't want to mess myself up, the general effect is a mirror image. The stitches are going the other direction. If you're in a right-handed mindset like I would be and like the authors of textiles and clothing probably are, um, it would look like the fabric was being held backwards, even though it wasn't. We also have to remember that back then, very little had been standardized. So, if nobody's ever taught you the one true way of doing XYZ, then you're going to do it whatever way makes the most sense to you. And it might be different from the way that Lady So-and-so does it. Or maybe somebody taught you, but they taught you the way that they figured out, or the way that somebody taught them, which is, again, not necessarily the same way that Lady So-and-So does it. And now that I have this little bit of fabric down here, it's much easier to wrap this around my finger 
got it pinched between my thumb and my tall finger and I just stitch as fast as I feel like it's very simple if it were as If the authors of Textiles and Clothing had described it as as simple a process as I think it is, I probably wouldn't have tried doing it. Except maybe, okay, it's still the best way to find the silk veil. It's just super simple, so not exciting there. Oops, I let go. And there we have another stitch. Now, this is very thick linen. I think it's 10 ounce. And it still makes quite a decently small size of roll. And if I were displeased at how my roll happened, move on and I'll show you but if I were displeased with my roll it's not fine enough whatever I would take my index finger fingernails are wonderful for this if you don't have fingernails because you have a job that makes you cut them off super close like a nursing then use an orange stick or Spoon. Anything that's hard but not rough. And by the way, if you haven't had your nails done recently, do them before you pick up your silk. You do not want rough nails or rough skin to mess up your fine silk. So before you pull out the silk, give yourself a nice manicure, doesn't have to be fancy, mine's practically never fancy, um, but make sure there's no rough edges on your nails, rub some lotion into your skin so that you don't have rough skin, do whatever it takes, take a little care of you. Now if you're following along, I bet that at this point, you're looking at your stitches and going, that's not bad. That's actually maybe pretty good. I bet if I were doing this on actual silk with nice white silk thread, instead of this brightly colored thread that stands out against my practice fabric, I bet it would look pretty good. How long has it been since we got started? Not long at all. But there are a few other things that you need to learn before I let you go. One of them is how to make a knot inside so that it doesn't show up on your lovely fine silk. So what I do is I let go of my roll and I unroll it just a bit. You can see that. And as far in as I can, I take a little bitty stitch. I hope you can see this. So after I take that little bitty stitch, I take another little bitty stitch in the same exact place. And then I have a loop. And I go through that loop. And I have another loop. 
So I go through that, and then I just pull and make it go away. Then, when I cut that thread, that knot is completely hidden inside the roll, right where I want it. So then, I roll it again, and I make sure I put a knot in my thread. Nice and simple there. And I do the phlebotomist move. And I like to go up at least two or three stitches past where I ended, just so there aren't any loose spots. Keep the tension the same even where I made a knot. And then, for those two or three stitches, I just follow where I stitched before. Just in case somebody can spot my stitches. Roll it again, wrap it around my finger, mush the roll up into place, and keep going. Stop now and show you some of the things that you'll need for making your own silk veil instead of just a practice piece. So you're going to need some silk. I get mine from Dharma Trading, any place else that has a good price and sells good silk, go for it. And this is three mom silk gauze. Mom is a unit of mass, and three mom is about the finest silk that you'll find anywhere that I've found any silk. <laughs> so, you will decide how long you need your next veil to be. silk gauze into a veil, you're first going to need to cut it. And don't stress out, this is not that $20 a yard silk. This is, I think it was $5 a yard last time I checked. Oops, wrong direction. And it's a very simple process, so not that big of a deal. I'm going to cut mine... Do I want one meter long or one and a half? I think we'll go with... tape pinched to my silk and I make a snip right there. Now I'm going to pull one thread from where I snipped it. I got 
gathers up so prettily. I don't need to gather it the whole way across, I just need to have it pulled out of place all the way across. So at this point, I can see where that thread came to the other end. so easily it didn't seem like I'd pull the whole thing. And then you want to put something dark under it so you can see where that thread was.
does not work nearly as well as my sleeve for showing the difference. If you don't want to do this over your sleeve, I recommend just any generic black or dark cloth. This will go back in the back to protect it, and this will get folded up because our next step is to pile our corners on top of each other. unless you want a round or oval veil. If you want a rectangular one or a square one, skip this step and just round the corner as little as possible when you're rolling it. This part's a little fussy, but you want your rounded edge to gently and evenly come into your straight edge. You don't want it to be a little bit off.
there. That should be enough, and if it isn't, we will do more. Now, I find that this graph here is a lovely tool for figuring out my curve. pen marker and if I go in three or four squares then I just follow that go one up one over on either side of that one over, you rise and you run, and then this is about three and a half. So one down, two over, and then one down, three and a half. Yay! We have a curve that will look about right. I'll give myself a little something to follow. This is not set in stone, it's set in silk. If your veil is a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, you might want to take your curve in a little bit and make it bigger. If your veil is a little narrower, or if you're trying to do a rectangular veil but you don't want the fuss of rolling the very, very ends of your rectangle, Cut off just a little bit and round it that way. some places where you didn't round it very well. You can go back and fix those, although you're going to be rolling the edge. And anything that's not major is going to be pretty well hidden. Which is a lovely thing about working with silk gauze. Now, side of the line. And if any part of my edge doesn't seem to be lining up properly, I go back and tweak that because I can.
Now I have four more samples for my students to use in class. And one new reveal as soon as I can get it hemmed. And it will be beautiful, just like all of them. When I sell my silk veil kits to my students, it comes with a one yard length of silk because your most common veil styles are about one yard in length and it's a good size for someone who's starting out with veil hemming. I have however made much longer veils. This one is much shorter, it's about as short as it can go, <laughs> but I have made I have made two yard long veils, um, this was a yard and a half, um, so was this I think. One yard long, and a Roman one that I'm not sure exactly how long it is. Um, I just took the length of silk, draped it like the statues, and went, okay, if I cut here, it'll be the perfect length. I did not hem the sides of this thing, just the ends. You will also need some silk thread. I bought a cone because why not? You don't have to. You can buy a much smaller spool of thread. This is also silk. It came from Joann's and they do carry white. I just didn't need it. <laughs> I also find that the fine beading needles from Joann's and Michael's or wherever are the best choice for doing the silk veil because they have a big enough eye but not a big one and they're so skinny that they'll slip through the roll with little to no problem. Now I do strongly suggest you might notice that all my veils when they're not in use are in little plastic baggies. I also do that, of course, with the silk veils that I'm in the process of making. I also have learned to put the needle on a separate piece of fabric that's a little sturdier than gauze, and just so I'm not detangling the needle every time. And a good pair of snips is not a bad idea.
so I hope that this has taught you a new skill or a new use of a current skill. And please, if you use this to make a silk veil, show me what you did. Let me see how lovely your silk veil looks. I'll see you next time.